JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 1st. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It was found fractionally higher only against the Japanese yen, while it lost the most ground versus NOC, the Euro and the Aussie in that order. The weakening of the dollar and the yen suggests that uh, the financial community continued trading in a risk on fashion. However, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, this was not the case. Major EU indices were a sea of red, while later, in the US, both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 slid 0.78 and 0.22% respectively. Only Nasdaq closed its uh, trading higher, 0.68%, aided by gains in both Tesla and Apple after their stock splits, as the lower prices may be making those stocks more attractive to retail investors. Risk sentiment improved uh, somewhat during the Asian session today, perhaps after China's Kaijin manufacturing PMI rose to 53.1 from 52.8 instead of uh, sliding to 52.6 as the forecast suggested. Both Japan's Nikkei 225 and China's Shanghai Composite traded virtually unchanged, while South Korea's KOS KOSPI is currently up 0.86%. Uh, in our view, yesterday's slight inequities may have been the reason of a month-end rebalancing rather than a trend reversal, with, th with uh, central banks willing to do more in order to support the global economy from the effects of the pandemic, and with headlines surrounding a potential vaccine coming in on the bright side, we would consider the current retreat as a corrective phase. We still see decent chances for a rebound in equities and other risk-linked assets, something that could continue weighing on safe havens like uh, the US dollar and the Japanese yen. Overnight, we also had a central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this was the RBA. The bank decided to maintain its targets for the cash rate and the yield on three-year government bonds at 0.25%, at but also increased the size of its term funding facility in order to make it easier for banks to access uh, more funds for longer. Officials reiterated that the downturn due to the coronavirus is not as severe as earlier expected, but underlined that the recovery is likely to be both uneven and bumpy, adding that they remain willing to expand their stimulative efforts if uh, deemed necessary. They also referred to the Aussie, saying that it has appreciated to be around its highest level in uh, nearly two years. That said, they didn't appear concerned over its appreciation. The currency barely reacted at the time of the announcement, confirming our view that it is mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader investor morale, rather than the small tweaks to the monetary policy. If risk appetite returns uh, into the market due to its uh, risk-linked property, the Aussie is likely to continue being benefited, especially against uh, currencies which are seen as uh, safe havens, the likes of the US dollar and the Japanese yen. As for today, the main release may be Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for August. The headline rate is forecast to have declined to 0.2% year-over-year from 0.4%, while the core one is anticipated to have slid to 0.8% year-over-year from 1.2%. 
at its uh, latest meeting, the ACB did not alter its uh, monetary policy, but stayed ready to adjust all its uh, instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves uh, towards its aim in a sustained manner. With that in mind, further slowdown in consumer prices may increase the chances for additional easing by the ECB and perhaps hurt somewhat the euro. However, we don't expect uh, this data set to prove uh, the catalyst behind a, tre a trend reversal in uh, euro dollar. With the greenback staying under selling pressure due to the recent risk on trading, we would treat any pullback in the pair as a corrective phase of the broader uh, medium term uptrend. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European day, apart from uh, Eurozone CPIs, we also get the final manufacturing PMIs for August from several Eurozone nations and the bloc as a whole. As it is always the case, the final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The UK final manufacturing PMI is also coming out. Later in the day, we get the US final market manufacturing index alongside the ISM manufacturing PMI for the month. The final market print is expected to match its uh, initial estimate, while the, AS, the ISM index is expected to have risen fractionally to, to 54.5 from 54.2. With regards to the energy market, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is uh, available. Tonight, during the Asian session Wednesday, we have Australia's uh, GDP for the second quarter. The forecast uh, suggests that the Australian economy contracted 6% quarter-over-quarter after sliding 0.3% in the first quarter. This is likely to drive the year-over-year -year rate down to minus 5.3% from plus 1.4%. A minus 5.3% year-over-year GDP rate would still be above the RBA's own forecast for the quarter, which is at minus 6% year-over-year and thus we don't expect this release to alter expectations around the RBA's future plans. We believe that a much worse than expected print is needed to spark speculation for additional easing by this bank. We also have three speakers on today's agenda, ECB Vice President Luis de Guintos, ECB Executive Board Member Philip Lane, and FOMC Board Governor Lael Brainard. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.